Hey Hodies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hodemess Tom and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today I'm going to be going over all of the Makeup Forever items that I purchased. I was going to do like a very in-depth brand review with Makeup Forever, however they have reformulated a lot of the things that I had purchased. So what this video is is just me following up with you on like my progress with some of these things, how I feel about them now. It's not going to be like the most in-depth review. I have some of the things I, I feel very confident that I can tell you how I feel about them. Some of the things I did not use as much and I will talk about that as we go through it. But if you happen to be new here, hi, welcome to my channel. My channel is all about loving my makeup collection as it is first and foremost while being critical and cynical of new makeup releases. But I do like to do in-depth reviews every now and then and this was part of what I usually do once every couple of months where I buy like as much as I can from a brand within reason and then I like tell you about my experiences with them and I like to do that behind the scenes. So if this kind of content sounds good to you, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure to like this video and I'm also on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. There's no pressure to you. You're welcome to do it. You're welcome to not. Every patron gets the same benefits no matter what level of patronage they're at. I just really appreciate your support. Thank you to all of my current patrons, but again, there's no pressure to do that. There's merch down below if you are into such things. Let's get into the video. Before we get too far into the video, some people have commented on my last video and said, well now you can do a comparison of the new formula to the old formula. And unfortunately, where I'm at right now is I can't just buy another $400 worth of Makeup Forever. I mean, I could. In theory, I could. And then basically half of my budget for full brand reviews for this year would have gone to Makeup Forever. And while I think it was a good idea for me initially to have investigated Makeup Forever for the reasons I mentioned in my first impressions video. I don't know that I want to try more Makeup Forever. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just like it's not something that I'm like super interested in continuing. And although I don't think that like Makeup Forever obviously didn't reformulate to like screw me over and I'm well aware of that, but it does leave me feeling a little bit butthurt, right? You know, I invest a lot of time and a lot of money into working on that. And I understand that also now that if these products do get discontinued and you can get them on a discount and you use my review to make that decision, that's absolutely great. And I hope that that's what happens ultimately, that we could get a deal on some of these really great items that I was able to find. For, for two reasons, I won't be pursuing old formula versus new formula with Makeup Forever. One, I don't want to keep these products because some of these products really didn't work out for me and I think they're just going to languish in my, like I don't want to keep them around. And I didn't even really like using them <laughs> in the first place. And for the second reason, it's just like I don't want to pour another 300 to $400 into Makeup Forever. So that's the reason I won't be doing that. But I do appreciate uh, the very thoughtful comments where people were like, that would be something that you'd be interested in. I understand, but I think I want to move on to a different brand for, <laughs> my next in-depth review of a brand. Anyway, back to the video. So I have ranked them based on my experience with them and how much I'd be likely to recommend them to you and or use them again ever. There are some things I'm going to hold on to because I really love them. There are some things I'm going to hold on to to continue testing and then there are some things I'm just going to declutter. So all of my items that I consider to be testing, they live in the same drawer and that drawer is a bit overrun. I'm in a growth spurt in my channel as far as like being getting PR. <laughs> and so like there's just like more of it than there ever has been. And it'll be nice to get some of this out of the way to not feel as much pressure or as much guilt about not using it. But as we progress through this conversation, just know that the most important thing to me might not be how perfect an item is. It is how much I feel excited to grab it and use it despite what might be its shortcomings, if I think it has any. So, and these are all just obviously my personal opinions and my personal experiences with these. So let's start with in last place. I don't know what number each thing is, but just know we're starting with the worst and we're going to work our way to the best. In last place is the HD Skin Twist and Light. This is the shade Light Claire. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. So if you've never seen it before, there are three different like sections inside of here. One has yellow powder, one has blue powder, and one has pink powder. And then to get the powder out, it comes out the bottom. So you kind of like do this back and forth, not like all the way around, but it's a back and forth. And the bottom gets filled up a little bit with powder. And then the problem, you know, you might think it might be really beautiful, but hopefully we'll catch on camera. There is like, glitter in it. And, you know, I'm okay with, like, something that has a radiant finish, 
but I don't want glitter in my powder. I always seem to end up getting errant glitter all over my face because I really love glittery eyeshadows and fallout I don't care about, but I'm not going to powder my whole face with a powder that has a literal glitter in it. Now, if you just watched my last video, I have this powder from Dior that is has bigger chunks of glitter, so I will give Makeup Forever a little bit of credit that this glitter is a little less prominent than the one from Dior, but I'm gonna say like, let's keep glitter out of my face powder. Now, I understand wanting a radiant finish, I want, a, but like, chunks like chunks of glitter I just I don't quite understand it and I thought my skin looked worse after I used it I've only used it twice I feel like it ruined my makeup every time and so I never wanted to try to figure out how it works because my success rate was zero out of the two times and never once in either application did I see really any benefits to this like I just wouldn't recommend this to you it's just it's, it's bummer. And this is one of the things that is new. This is like a new thing to make up forever. So this is like in their line currently. It's not a reformulation. It's like, this is the new thing. I don't know what they were thinking, but I will be decluttering this. I, mm, I don't care for this. Next worst is the Rouge Artist Lipstick. This is a shade 100 Empowered Beige. Now it's not the shade. It is a concealer lip. I kind of knew that going into it. I maybe thought it was a, like a little bit deeper. And I do think even when I'm holding it up next to my skin, it looks more like a nude. But I have it on my lips right now. I'll just apply a little bit more. So it's not the color that I have a problem with. This formula feels dated. What I will say that if the formula is like nice, lightweight, it doesn't feel like much on the lips, which is kind of nice. However, it doesn't sit on my lips very nicely. It doesn't look good on my lips. Every piece of texture it seems to want to cling on to and emphasize and it does this weird balding okay obviously as your lipstick gets closer to like the wetness of your mouth it kind of starts dissipating but it like does these weird bald patches before most lipsticks even start doing that and I just don't like it and the other thing is I don't understand this component I don't want to put this in my lipstick drawer I don't understand why it's so big now I did mention that like perhaps if you have accessibility needs that this might be a little bit easier to open because you have like you can grab this but the thing is this is all that's left to hold, grab onto so you ha have to have some dexterity in some of your fingers to be able to open that so I, I'm not even going to give them credit for that because also if you did it on purpose I would boast about that if I purposefully tried to make packaging that was accessible and I was successful at it I would be like this packaging was made with accessibility in mind but I don't think that's what they were after I hate the way it smells it smells it kind of smells just like it doesn't have like a vanilla scent and it might be unscented I'm not 100% sure but it doesn't smell good like I, I don't mind like you know with my lip products like a vanilla scent you know I could handle that I'm not gonna declutter this because someone in my comment section mentioned that they like to use this as like a brightener for some other lipsticks you know what actually that's not my gig I'm not gonna hold on to this this is a pass I wouldn't I wouldn't buy this and this is also something that I think is a newer formulation for them but who knows with makeup forever they seem to be moving very quickly through formulas and reformulations so I don't I don't really know what they're doing I don't know what they're up to me again hi I didn't end up decluttering this lipstick and I will tell you why I posted pictures of me in this look on Instagram and m most of the comments were about how much people liked my lip so I'm holding on to empowered beige I'm gonna take it with me to Sephora or next time I go shopping to see if I can find it in a formula that I already know I like because I did like the color of it quite a bit and I did really like it with Endless Cacao which we'll talk about in a few moments here so I want Empowered Beige in a different formula because I don't like this formula that's still true but I like the color I just don't like the formula those were definitely the two things that I liked the least were the worst did not care for them no thank you I would not like to buy you or I would not like to use you I'm gonna say we're now moving into like all right categories all right like, okay fine you know sort of things the next thing is the makeup forever ultra HD setting powder so it's like the translucent one it reminds me of like old just it's it this feels dated I don't know if this is the I don't know if they're updating this I think they should what I am looking for in a powder is soft focus, blurring, and also setting, but I'm never looking for mattifying. Maybe a slight bit, you know, just to like set things in, but I'm never looking for like super mattifying. And I felt like this is just more mattifying than like I care for. But like I said, the formula feels dated. So like I understand 
my Makeup Forever might be updating some of their things because I think for the most part, people's wants for setting powder have gone beyond this. Now this might be a useful tool still for working makeup artists in film and photography, but I think for like a consumer, this is just like not a powder that like I, I would want or that I think that a lot of my friends would want. Like, I don't know, it's just like, it's not, it doesn't feel very like elegant, doesn't feel very like now, doesn't feel like of the time because whenever I think of popular powders now, I think of the Kosas Cloud set. Charlotte Tilbury and uh, I haven't used the Kosas but I have used the Charlotte Tilbury and it's like yes it sets but no it's not like an intense mattification that's what I think of like just I think of powders very differently like I think like even though like well I've used the Wouter but I, I haven't used it in a while but like something like that something like we almost are always kind of looking for like a hydrating powder like something that's not gonna suck the life out of our skin but it is gonna set our makeup and I just think this kind of if if applied correctly, it doesn't set the life on your skin, but it doesn't have the blurring qualities that I like. So I'm going to pass on this, but it's like, I don't think it's bad. I I just don't happen to be very excited about it. Next up are the eyeshadows. I tried, this is the Pro Palette in 003 Tangerine. Now, the color story is really pretty, and I didn't have any problems with these eyeshadows. The reason that this is ranked like a little bit lower is that I never went out of my way to use them unless I was forcing myself to use them. People who watch my channel a lot already know this, but I'm not super into like eyeshadow right now. Like it's just not my favorite category of makeup. It's not the thing that gets me the most excited whenever there's an eyeshadow release. I'm very rarely excited about it. So that's just kind of where I'm at with eyeshadow. So, but also like this color story isn't like super inspired. I hate this highlighter being in here. I think it's always a mistake when brands do this. The only way that this would work is if there were like options for the highlighter. But another problem with this is there's not a lot of depth happening in here. The deepest shade is a like satin shimmer shade, which a lot of people don't really like to use unless it's on the lid. So it's just like doesn't feel super well thought out and for a pro makeup brand to put something together like this it's just like that's as inspired as your color story can get whenever you look at their singles collection and I would say that that is the right way to approach the Makeup Forever eyeshadow experience is to buy some shadows and you know come up with a color story that will feel good to you this this isn't it it just like doesn't feel like it but I do think that this color story is pretty I just think it's like not finished. I think that's kind of a shame. I do like how compact it is. It's very easy to like grip with my whole hand. And like if I was traveling, I could see myself like this would be like an ideal kind of situation. What I would do, and I'm not going to do because I would like to pass this palette on in its entirety, is keep the, the, the palette itself and then get rid of the eyeshadows and fill it with eyeshadows that I like better. It's been a while since I've seen an empty one of these, but I think they also updated this component too. So their, their palettes or the magnetic palettes are a little bit different than this now. So I'm not actually sure even the outer packaging being something that's going to be sticking around. Now I think that their eyeshadows are already reformulated and I do believe that this is the new formulation. What I wanted from it is to be like, oh yes, like if you're looking for a single shadow but you're someone who's weary of buying your eyeshadows online, you could go to a store that sells Makeup Forever, look at their single shadow range and be like, okay, that's what that color looks like. You can swatch it in store. Uh, Cause that's like a, some, not, that's not something we're really able to do with indie eyeshadows singles because it's like they don't sell them in stores most of the time you just buy them online. So that was like what I was hoping to find whenever I was navigating this but I, th I think their eyeshadows are okay. I don't think they're the best. They're not the most exciting to me. They're not Viseart. They're not Hindash. They're not Natasha Denona but they are completely serviceable and if you if there was like some occasion where I only had access to Makeup Forever eyeshadows and I really needed an eyeshadow I would absolutely like go for it you know but that's a lot of caveats. So I'm going to declutter this and pass this on to someone who will hopefully like it a lot more than me. So now we're kind of getting into good territory and I want to talk about these all together. Now this is a palette that I put together with three of their sculpting shades. These are reformulated. So this is an old formula. They just came out with the new formulation of, I have the blush on my cheeks today, the lighter one over here. I'm having on my cheeks today. And what I will say is that these, this is a really beautiful formula. It's just not an exciting formula. So when I think of my favorite blushes and the blushes that I tend to run back to over and over again, there's always like a something to them. There's like a nuance to them. Whereas I feel like the shades in here are a little bit straightforward except for the contour in the center, which is a little 
bit green. And I think that's going to work for some very fair people. I don't think the green exactly works for me. And also the contour doesn't blend out as well as these two blushes. So I don't know what is going on. I don't know if the formula is actually different with that. But the blushes I would definitely, I would buy again because it does, it blends out beautifully. It looks, it like melts into the skin. It's a really nice powder, which is interesting because their other powder products are like not as a, don't feel as good as these do. Like I said, something that's really important to me when we're talking about blushes in particular is like nuance, something that feels not so straightforward. And while they definitely have a ton of shades for you to choose from, they're not like the most exciting. And I do interact with my blushes for the most part on like a blush by blush basis. Like they're in their own compact. I know what's in that compact, but there are, you know, there are exceptions to that too. There are some blushes I really like that I have in palettes, but like overall, it's just like not the best way for me to love and experience my blushes. So for that reason, I'm going to also pass on these. The contour, I just don't think I like the color of it now. And I could have maybe bought another one to like, if I could have gone a shade deeper, but I was like, well, let me use the fair one and see if it's like really easy to use. It's like a perfectly serviceable powder, but it's not as good as the blushes I felt. And it's just, you know, it's it's not my contour powder. It's not something that I would reach for. But I do think they all worked and they were better than all of the other things I previously mentioned. And so for that, like, I hope their new formulation is, I don't even know, I don't even know what to expect from the new formulation. Someone told me that their new highlighters are really, really nice. I did not, well, I couldn't wear the highlighter in the eyeshadow palette because it was too deep for me. So I can't speak to that. And again, I don't know if that's the new formulation or not. It's a little like some of these things were purchased in like that in between time where some of the things were reformulated and some of the things were not. But as far as this, the new formulation goes, I hope that it's a more exciting formula. And I don't think there's anything wrong, especially when we're talking about like a pro makeup brand and a brand that kind of like leans more into being like for professionals and like the needs of a professional. I'm okay with powders just being like, okay, they don't need to be the most exciting because that's not always what you want on camera in a, in a professional setting. It's like, we're not, that's not what we're like looking for whenever we're like trying to make someone look normal. So I, I, I can, I can understand and I can appreciate that. But for me, I like, for me and my personal uses, I like, I like something a little bit more, a little bit more exciting than these. The next thing up is the Aqua Resist Color Pencil. And I have the shade Ebony. So this is their, you know, it's their waterproof eyeliner. Now, I do believe that it can be used on lips. No, this one's specifically an eyeliner. And so this is like a blackened brown shade. It's, I would say it's more black than it is brown. It is the eyeliner I have on today. You can definitely see the brown in it. It's not just black. It definitely is softer than that. Here's why it's not like ranked higher. I think it's nice. It glides onto the skin. It's a little tough to blend out. Like if you were looking to do something like what I did today, this took quite a bit of work to get it to like buff out. It did, but it like almost didn't want to. And I felt like that was just like, there isn't enough time for that. And it's not as glidey as my favorite Victoria Beckham Satin Kajal liners. And so like, it's not getting invited into my makeup collection, but I do think it's a good eyeliner. I've worn it a couple of times and I never felt like it was very difficult to get off my eyes with an oil-based cleanser and a second cleanse. It definitely didn't like run all over my face either, either and it, I think it stayed in the waterline pretty well. This is a case of it was always something where I like had to force myself to use it. But not in a bad way. It's just like, oh yes, I am reviewing Makeup Forever. I need to use that more. Not and But not like it's entirely unenjoyable and I'm avoiding using it. It's just like was never top of mind. And I think that something good or really great has to be top of mind for me. But I don't think this is a bad product. And I, I think it's, you know, I think it's actually a very good product. It's just not my perfect eyeliner. And as of right now, the eyeliner that has been most perfect to me and my needs and wants, it has been the Victoria Beckham Satin Kajal Liner. It's a good product, but it's not a winner. Next up, we'll talk about the Smoky Stretch Mascara. It's, very, it's actually a very good mascara. I like the applicator. It's a rubber wand with really short, spiky bristles. I tend to like these. Now, my favorite mascaras almost never come in this packaging, but I always like whenever I get to experience it. There's something about that type of wand that I feel like separates my lashes better. The, it's a good formula. I did have it flake one time and I don't really know what happened in that day, but I haven't had it flake since, but I felt like it wore all day. I don't think I noticed any transferring. It was just like that one time I like had some of it flake off my eyelashes. It's just not as dramatic as I like my 
mascara to be. I don't wear false lashes, and so I need my mascara to make my lashes look more dramatic, much more dramatic, if that's what I'm doing instead. Like, instead of putting on false lashes. Obviously, like, there's not a lot of mascaras, if any, that look like a false lash, but this isn't close, as close as I would like to get. Like, you know, I would need something that feels like a little bit closer to, to that for me to want to buy it. But it's not so bad. Like, I'm gonna keep it around, obviously. I'm, I can't pass this on to anyone. Like, I don't think anyone would want to take a, a mascara from me, and I wouldn't want them to. Like, that's a weird thing to take. So I'm going to use it for another month, because I bought this at the end of May. So, I, I, you know, I'll keep it in rotation. The thing is, I did actually reach for this more than I reached for the eyeliner I just talked about. And while it's not my favorite mascara, it was, it was something that I was, like, willing to wear. It just has to be what your preferences are. And then I think it's a pretty good mascara. Now I know mascara is not something that people want to pay this much money for, for the most part. Like that feedback from my audience is pretty clear. I'm in the minority. I, I would, I will buy a luxury mascara. Now I kind of cap out at 30. Anything more than that's like too much for me because it's such a, pro it's a product that you have to rebuy so much, but it doesn't warrant the, the price tag of it. I believe it's like in the mid twenties. So uh, I'm going to hold on to it, but just, just not my favorite. Now we're really getting into like the, the good stuff. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the primer. So this is the Makeup Forever Redness Corrector Step 1 Primer. I have no idea where this is in the reformulation process. What I will tell you is that I remember Makeup Forever primers because I've used them before being very stinky and I hated that. I think they smelled. Now it is still stinky but it's a more pleasant smell to me but if you have sensitivity to fragrance then I would avoid it. If But if your sensitivity to fragrance is just the smell and not skin reaction it does dissipate. Like it's not something that I feel like I can smell all day. So as far as pros go I think it does a really nice job evening out my redness. It doesn't take you to zero. It does do some work for your foundation so whenever you're applying I feel like with the foundation and this in play it kind of neutralizes redness to a place where you really can't see it through the foundation no matter how light the coverage of that product is. It plays really well with any of the foundations I've used it with not just the one I bought from Makeup Forever. It does its job and this is more something I recently noticed is that it's thick. My favorite primer is the Victoria Beckham Cell Rejuvenating Primer and this is a lot thicker than that. It's thicker than the Bobbi Brown. Like it takes us some time for your skin to accept this primer. At least that's been my experience with it. Because of the thickness I did not love putting it over top of SPF. Now it never pilled or bothered the SPF. I just felt like it didn't want to melt into my skin whenever I did use SPF underneath it. That's going to be a big deal breaker for a lot of people because a lot of us wear SPF and you should be wearing SPF underneath your makeup and you should be wearing SPF when you go out. And so that's a little bit of a joy kill. However, it, I still like it and I still think it's really good and I am going to keep it because it's such a little thing. Like it's such a little thing. I'm, I'm, I feel like I could pan this no problem, especially if I was like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use it until I pan it because it, while it is like, you know, a sizable amount, I still think it's probably maybe at most like 14 to 20 uses of it. Like, I don't think it's going to like last. I really like it. I just think it's a really thick formula and it doesn't melt into the skin right away. And that might have to do with the fact that it has that little bit of green coverage and that might, it needs to carry it in such a fashion. But yeah, I really enjoy it. I want to believe in like green color correcting primer and I'm sure there's one out there that has all of the texture and things that I want with the coverage, with the canceling of the redness. Uh, so I don't think this is like the perfect one, but it's a, it's a very, it's, it's very good. But I don't think that as far as like the way I do my makeup, that it like beats this out. Do you know what I mean? Like it doesn't beat out my regular green color corrector. Uh, cause just because of the, the, the way it didn't really like want to blend into my skin. Next up is something that I actually have changed my mind about since my first impression. I did not like this product and I don't know if this is something that's going to stick around, but it happens to be the exact product that someone in my comment section said the new formulation of it's really good. And so I'm wondering if this is the new formulation of it, but this is the Pro Glow Illuminating and Sculpting Highlighter and I have the shade 01 Rose. Or maybe it's rosé. I don't know if there's supposed to be an accent on it. This is what it looks like in the pan. And I have it on my cheek today. So the thing that I complained about whenever I wore this in the first video, I was complaining about the, the, the visible glitter. I try to be very aware 
of glitter in a highlighter. Not so much for me, it doesn't really always bother me, but it's like a big deterrent for a lot of people, especially a lot of people who are in like the demographic that watch my videos. So like I'm in my 30s and a, a lot of the people who watch my videos are in their 30s or even older. I know there are a lot of you that watch my videos that are also in your 20s. I know who I'm mostly talking to and I try to keep that in mind. And visible glitter chunks, shimmer chunks in highlighter tends to not sit well on anyone who has like textured skin, especially in that area. And as we all know, highlighter, no matter how good the formulation is, going to potentially highlight your flaws, highlight texture. As I've used this, I feel like it blurs my skin. <laughs> I don't know how it does it because I just feel like right where the highlighter is, it looks airbrushed. <laughs> While you can still see the visible glitter in it, it's dispersed well enough, like it doesn't all gather seems to be like an even disbursement whenever I apply it to my cheek. And maybe that's why it gives me the soft focus, but like I've been loving this. It, it's been a highlighter that I've actually like gone out of my way to reach for a lot recently. And I can't even tell you why I pulled it out again at all, because I really wrote it off kind of just like I did with the first powder I talked about, even the second powder I talked about, and the lipstick. Cause like these are things that I never wanted to use again. But something, I for some reason I pulled it out again and I put it on my cheek and I said, that's actually really pretty. It's living in that, I just recently talked about how I feel like I'm in a different space with highlighter where I really like it, but the way I like it's different. Like I always love a soft glow and I feel like this gives me the soft glow. Now if you do, like obviously still if I get really close you can see the little bits of shimmer particles, but I think whenever you're an appropriate distance away and what I like, I've said, that, I used to say this all the time in my videos, it's like when you're kissing distance everything looks weird. And I don't think you should always be judging your makeup by like looking into your mirror like this close to your face because like of course it's not gonna look that good. But that's not how people see you. That That's people are not getting that close even no matter how good your eyes are whenever you're standing like an appropriate distance away for a conversation from someone those people aren't seeing whenever like that same thing that whenever you get up close. And I just think that whenever you are that distance away this just looks really beautiful and natural and gorgeous lit from within kind of glow. I really like it and I'm going to keep it and I think that I'm going to actually end up using this a lot more. Now it says it's a rose and I guess like it, it's a slight warm pink shift to it like a slight warm pinkness to it. It feels incredibly neutral to me. I definitely have had highlights in the past that like have been this like rose rose gold color before that I felt like I could only wear with warm tone looks or if it was like formulated in such a way where it was like more silver I could only but this feels like it falls right down the middle I think it would go with any eye look or any look that I put together and for that reason like I think it's just it's very good it's very good and if this happens to be one of the things that they are discontinuing and they mark it down I personally think it would be worth checking out obviously I don't need a backup this will ever I will never finish this I will never finish this but I really like it and I hope to continue to love it more and more and more as I continue to have it and now that it will be in the highlight drawer and I will see the compact I, I think I'll use it even more like I like this quite quite a bit all right up next this has already been reformulated the reformulation is already launched my friend Kate a state of Kate she has already started talking about this on her Instagram. I don't know if she has a video up talking about this yet, if it's been like incorporated into one of her videos. So she is the new one. This is the old one. This is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD uh, concealer. This concealer is very, very good. And I do feel as though if I hadn't come across the Givenchy Prism Libre concealer before this, I would have really liked this. It's really good. And my favorite way to wear it is as a foundation. I think it looks incredible all over the face. I think that underneath the eye, it at not so much at the beginning of the day, like right now, like I just applied this not that long ago, maybe an hour or two ago. It looks really good. It's, I would say it's also like a medium coverage, but by the end of the day, I feel like my under eyes look really heavy with this. That's why it's like not a perfect concealer for me. Now the Givenchy concealer, I like all over my face and very concentrated under my eyes and I think it wears a little bit better. Because I have the Givenchy concealer, I'm going to pass this on to someone else who will love it. And in fact, like maybe I have a friend who really swears by this and is upset that it's getting discontinued with the new formulation. I'd be like more than happy to send it to that person. But for me, it's like just not the per it's a really good concealer. I think my skin has looked great every time I've used it. I just think like long long term, it's just, it just doesn't look as good at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day. And of 
course, most things don't. But it looks bad enough that, like, I don't feel... Like, unless I'm doing it all over the face, there's, like, no point in me keeping this. But it's really pretty. And that, this is the shade 11. I don't know if the new shades translate to the old shades. I have no idea. You know, definitely get shade matched to the new concealer if that's something you're interested in. Obviously, it wasn't a perfect product, and they reformulated it. So maybe if I tried the new formulation, it wouldn't have the same issues that I have with this. But I think it's really nice. I think it's really nice. It's a very nice natural finish. Looks really good. We're now at my top three. We're at the top three. And these are all the most exciting things that I've tried. In third place is the Artist Color Pencil. So this one's not waterproof. And this one's going to be used for your lips or your eyes. I've only used it as a lip liner because everyone and their mother talks about this. And I, I wonder if they're going to reformulate this or if this is popular enough and sells well enough as is that people, that they weren't worried about it. But I have the shade Endless Cacao. And I actually really wanted to try Total Taupe. Someone in my comment section said it's discontinued, but it was still on the website, but it was just out of stock. So I don't know if it was out of stock because it's just, I, I have no idea. But this is Endless Cacao. And on my hand, it looks a lot warmer. But when I put it on my lips, it almost looks gray. I love that. I love that. I love a grungy little lip moment. And I think as a lip liner for Empowered Beige from the lipstick, I think it is, it looks really good. I think my lips would look a lot crazier if I didn't have this on and I was just wearing Empowered Beige. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful product. <laughs> I don't get excited about lip liners usually. But, you know, I put this on. I'm able to buff it out. And it doesn't feel like, it feels like it gives me plenty of time to do that. Then I feel like it sets and it wears really well throughout the day. My favorite thing about this though, is I have some cool toned lip glosses and those cool toned lip glosses, I feel like always make my lips look milky. Now I know some people really love a milky lip color. It's not my preferred, it's not my, my preferred. Putting this underneath a lip gloss or like just lining my lips with it, with one of those milky lip glosses, game changer. I now love them. It's like my favorite lip to do. I have two cool toned lip glosses from Pat McGrath and I've worn this with both of them and it looks so good. These are my, that's my favorite lip combination. Now the Pat McGrath lip gloss is really good. It's just not my favorite lip gloss formula. So Victoria Beckham, if you could really get on releasing some sparkly lip glosses, please, please, would you please? Thank you. So I could do that. It's really good. And I think it would be great in any color. But Endless Cacao for me is like the girl. Like and I really lucked out because I feel like the last couple brand reviews I've done where I bought lip liners, I like didn't like the color, but I thought the formulas are pretty good. But I like this more than the Victoria Beckham lip liner formula. Probably not as much as the lip sheet from Charlotte Tilbury. It's not that creamy. I would absolutely buy another shade of this. Like I would still like to try Total Taupe because I want to know what the difference is because this looks great on me. What does Total Taupe look like on me? Really great gonna keep that one. In second place, you could see it on my eyes today. This is the Starlet Diamond Powder. This is the shade 106, which I believe is called Granny White. I think that's the name. Uh, I don't know if they're doing away with these. I don't know if they're reformulating these. I'm not really sure how they would reformulate these. This is delightful. I love sparkly things. And what I like about this is that it's this, this feels more pro product. Loose eyeshadow, loose products like this are not very consumer friendly. And I've recently complained about loose eyeshadows in one of my critical sasses. And I stand by everything I said. But there also, you know, are some pros. This is really sparkly and gorgeous and stunning. I put it on my eyes today with the mixing medium from Mayron the mixing liquid. So I, because this is loose, I put it on my palette here and then I added some of the Rayon mixing medium and then I just kind of wiped it on my eyes. And then after it was set a little bit, but still a little bit wet, I took some of the powder loose and tamped it in to make it look even more sparkly because it looks more like a metallic if you just use the mixing medium with it. Like it's still sparkly, but not as sparkly. And then I, it's really pretty. It's really pretty. And I think, my thing was whenever I wanted to try, the reason I wanted to try this, the reason that I bought this, the reason that this was something that I thought I might enjoy from Makeup Forever, and the reason I wanted to like, it It has like a similar effect to some of those very sparkly indie shadows, very textured indie shadows. And sometimes that's not so accessible through Sephora or Ulta in person. So to have something from like Makeup Forever that is accessible. You can look at it. You can get some on your fingers and swatch it to see what the texture is like. Obviously, until you put it on your eye, you really can't tell because there's something about obviously the shape of your eye and the way that light hits your eye where it, like you really get to see the magic. But like, let me dim the lights and zoom you in so you can just really take it in. 
that's really pretty. It reminds me of the iridescent glitters from Cleona. It's giving very much that energy because I've used this as a topper. If I just get a little bit less of it on my brush, it works really well as a topper. It's really beautiful as a topper. But if you mix it with a medium or you like put a pretty thick layer on it, it kind of holds its own as a shade. It's really pretty. I really like it. And I, it comes in a bunch of shades. This is another thing, like, I don't know that it's for my audience, especially the people who are really into indie eyeshadow. Like, I mean, it's really pretty and I think you would enjoy it. I don't think it's going to add anything that you don't already have. My excitement for this was more like, if you are someone who isn't sure that you'll like that kind of texture and you don't want to risk buying a shade that you might not like or just want to see it on your eyes, I think that this is a good option for you to go in store and interact with. And then if you like it, then you can buy it and try it that way. But it's, it's not the same as like the pressed ones, like the Cleona ones are pressed, uh, this are poured. I don't know. I don't know if they're pressed or poured, but you know, it's like in a pan as opposed to being loose. And I know that, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve for loose, but I really like this. I'm happy to keep it. I like the way it looks on my lids right now. I think it's really gorgeous and stunning. This shade actually reminds me a lot of Kaleidoscope, which I recently did like a singles spotlight on. And the Kaleidoscope actually didn't really make me very excited at all. And this makes me a lot more excited than that shade from Cleona. And in first place, this shade come as no surprise if you watch my videos regularly, but in case you don't, it is the Reboot Foundation. I have the shade Y218. It's what I have on my face today. I have been wearing this. I have like put a dent in this foundation. And most of the time when I'm wearing, like my foundation, it takes me a while to like see some, but like I'm getting some mileage out of this. It is the foundation so like my Surat Dewdrop Foundation is actually my favorite foundation. And I don't think this surpasses the Dewdrop Foundation. I think it's really good though. This is like my Surat Dewdrop Foundation for every day. And then my Surat Dewdrop Foundation is for like whenever I want to look at my absolute best. That's when I pick the Dewdrop Foundation. And then for like every day, this is like my every day. It's light, beautiful coverage. And I was a little bit unsure about this in my first video because I was just like, I don't know if the powders messed it up or not. And the powders did mess it up. When I started using my powders, it looked awesome. And I can't stop reaching for it. Now, I don't know because, okay, what I've noticed is that the caps change in the reformulation. So the cap will be the color of the product inside. And this does not have that. So I don't know if they're going to reformulate the reboot. I hope they don't. Or if they do, they remove all of the comedogenic ingredients because someone did leave a comment. They were like, there's some things that clog pores in that. Now, this doesn't typically bother me. Like, I don't have, I'm not acne prone. So I haven't experienced that. But, ooh. And I mean, I think this has a scent to it. It does distinctly smell. Like, every time I use them, I'm like, that's the reboot foundation. I don't know. I can't explain what it smells like to you, but it definitely like smells like something. I feel sad. I feel like I'm late to the party. Like definitely, obviously, all of the claims of this sound like things that I enjoy. Bright and smooth, firms, hydrates, evens out. So I would say bright and smooth, evens out. I will say that those are all things. Hydrates, I don't know if they mean over time. And firm, I don't know if they mean over time. I don't know if there's like skincare in here. I'm never worried about skincare claims. That's not what's important to me. I hate, actually hate that. But I just love the way that my skin looks with it. I love this so much. I highly recommend you trying it if you like similar makeup to me. Like if you have tried the Surat Dewdrop Foundation, and obviously the Surat Dewdrop Foundation is $75, but I do have a promo code for Surat. It's hope 15 for 15% off, which you don't have to use. I'm just like throwing that out there. But like, obviously this is not a drugstore pricing, but it's not $75. It's not $75. So if you want something more every day that feels like just the little sibling of the Surat Dewdrop Foundation. I think this is it. And I'm obsessed with it and I'm going to keep it. I only have two foundations and I like to max at four. And this is getting invited to the party. It's not bumping the Dewdrop Foundation, but it's invited into my makeup collection and I'm excited to continue using it. It's been my favorite thing that I've tried from Makeup Forever. Okay, that wraps up my little run through of these Makeup Forever products that some are, seem to be in limbo and some have already been reformulated since I purchased them. I hope you found any of this information insightful or useful to you. Let me know what you've used from Makeup Forever. Are you, have you tried any of the new reformulations? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd be very interested to hear what your thoughts are. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe. Again, I'm on Patreon and I have merch both completely optional. I'm just happy you're here watching, interacting with my content. That's the best way to support me or any other content creator. And that's that. Remember to follow your hope and you will find me. I'll see you in a video very soon. Bye bye.